Hey, Chavir, what's happening? Welcome back to Babylon Talmud. Today, we have the privilege of studying Daf Nun Aleph, Masech the Erevin, Daf 51. Um, so, what can I tell you about Daf 51? It's alright, it's cool. Um, at the beginning, there's just like some kind of, I don't know, Erevin-y things, but the, the most memorable thing I think about today's Daf is the Machlokas between Rabbi Meir and Rabbi um, Yehuda about what what is the main part of the Erev, right? Is Iker Erev Beregel, Iker Erev Bipas, we're going to get there, there's Machlokas Rav Nachman and, and, and Rav Chiza that we're going to see about how exactly to understand that Machlokas. That's probably going to be really the, the, the big sugya of, of today. So um, without further ado, let us jump in. Cool, so where are we? We are... Um, on Dafnun Amud Beis, two two lines from the bottom, we're really just uh, going to quote the Mishnah. So the Mishnah had said, Amr So if a fellow says that, you know what, I am going to be Kona Shvisa up ahead at the base of this tree, at the trunk of the tree. So then as long as the trunk of the tree is within 2,000 Amas of where he is, so he could walk there. And then from there, if his house is within 2,000 Amas, from there, then he can um, continue on to his house. So we see that already uh, once Shabbos comes in, he's allowed to walk 4,000 Amas. Fine. Nun Aleph, Amr Aleph at the top. That was from our Mishnah. Amr Rava says, Rava v'hu dechirahit li'ikaro mati. So Rava says something interesting, which is that when we say that, you know, when, when we allow a person to say, I'm going to be Kona Shvisa up ahead at that tree trunk, he has to be able to, you know, if he runs, if he really hustles, at least theoretically, he would be able to get to that tree trunk before Shabbos begins. That doesn't mean he has to act, actually get there before Shabbos begins, but he has to be at least close enough that if he really ran for it, he would be able to arrive there. If he wouldn't be able to arrive there, you know, even by running, so then, um, then, then, then it would not, he would not be able to say, I'm planning to make Shabbos at that tree trunk. Okay, so Amarava, Vuhu right? Right, he's only able to say that I'm going to be Kona Shvisa at this tree trunk up ahead if theoretically, if he were to run there, Mati, uh, right, Likaro Mati, he would, he would be able to arrive at the tree trunk. Amale Abaye. Abaye says to Rabba, Vahashchalo Katani. So, but one second, it says in the Mishnah, what does it say in the Mishnah, Chavre? Right, it says in the Mishnah that, um, Mishababa Derek Vahashchalo. Somebody's traveling and it's getting dark. It's, if, you know, if he's getting dark, he's allowed to say, "Look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna." Um, meaning, meaning, if it's getting dark before he gets to the tree trunk, not that he has to be able to run. The whole point is, it's a guy who's getting stuck and he's able to say, "Look, I'm, I'm planning to to make Shabbos under that tree, even though it's going to be dark before he gets there, and even though he does, he's not going to run there." So, um, so Rav answers, "Chashcha leveso." It means that it would be dark by the time that he gets home. But he would be able to get to the trunk of the tree before it got dark if he ran theoretically. Those who say Amarava said Rava Khashkalo Kimaske Kali Kali. Yeah. When it says that right that 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 you have a guy who's traveling and it's getting dark on him. So it's getting dark on him if he walks slowly. Aval Rayit Mati but you know, it, it, theoretically, if he were to run, he would be able to arrive at the tree trunk before it gets dark. Rav Rav Yosef Avukaz Libor Haraba and Rav Yosef, the two Roshi Yeshiva of Pumpedisa, were traveling together. Omele Rabba the Rav Yosef. Now, of course, Rabba was the Roshi Yeshiva first, and then Rav Yosef afterwards. That was Daf Gemara at the end of Masech the Brachis. So Omele Rabba the Rav Yosef. Now, Rabba says to Rav Yosef. So Mistam it was Friday afternoon, and it was. Getting very close to Shabbos, Rabbi says to Yosef, "Let us," he says, "You know what, Rav Yosef? Let us spend Shabbos under the palm tree, the svil achva that is like leaning on its friend." All right. The Amrila, the those who say "Tu se dikla de farik mari micharga," the those who say under the um, uh, palm tree that produces so much dates that you, that his that the owner of the palm tree is able to use those dates to pay his taxes with. Okay, whatever. So Rav Yosef says, that sounds very nice. Um, 
I, but I don't know, I, I don't know where this palm tree is. Omrle Rabbah says, Smochalai, don't worry, just, do you trust me? Do you trust me? Rely upon me. I'll take care of it. Titania, as we learn in a Brisa, Rabbi Yossi Omer says, Rabbi Yossi, if you have two people traveling, like us, one person knows of a, of a certain tree up ahead and the other one doesn't. Mm. So the one who doesn't know about the tree up ahead, Moser Shvisa, so the Makir. So he can sort of, um, uh, put his Shvisa with the one who does know. Kilu, uh, if you have two people, such as in this case, Rabbi and Rav Yosef, Rabbi knows about the tree up ahead, Rav Yosef doesn't, so Rav Yosef could just rely upon Rabbi. Shemakir Omer te Shvisa Senu b'makum ploni, that the person who knows about the tree, so in this case, Rabbi, he'll, he'll take care of it for both of them and he'll say that our Shvisa will be in, in, in such and such a place, um, you know, under this palm tree. Now, the Gemara says something very funny, which is Vilohi. It's not actually true, right? Rabbi had said, Rabbi had said to Rav Yosef, rely upon me, trust me, because after all, Rabbi o- we have a Bryson which Rabbi Yossi says that, that, that you would be allowed to trust me. Vilohi. Uh, the Gemara says, it's not really true. There isn't such a Bryson where Rabbi Yossi says that. Lo tanalek Rabbi Yossi, ela ki echi dilikabela mine mishim Yossi nimuko imo. You know, Yossi's been, Rabbi Yossi's been getting a lot of good press recently, right? And here we have another example that Rabbah wanted Rabbi Yosef to trust him. So he felt that, so he felt that if he says that there's a brisa from Rabbi Yossi saying that Rabbi Yosef can trust him, so then Rabbi Yosef would listen to him because because Rabbi Yossi has street credit. Rabbi Yosef nimuko imo. Rabbi Yossi nimuko imo, right? As we know. As we know from the Afyudal Ramad Beis and from all these Gemaras recently that are saying that, you know, if, 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 if Rabbi Yossi says something, we're going to pass him like him. So therefore, Rabbah wanted Rabbi Yosef to feel comfortable relying upon him to, to, to get them and be Konish Visa under this tree. So he claimed that there was a Brisa, which Rabbi Yossi says like he's, he's saying, but it's not really true. He just wanted Rabbi Yosef to, to, to trust him. <laughs> Interesting. It's also risky saying that to Rabbi Yosef because after all, Rabbi Yosef is like the encyclopedia of, uh, of, of Bryce's and Mishnayas. Therefore, uh, Rav Yosef probably would have known that this isn't really true, but, anyways. So the Mishnah had said that now if, uh, this person does not, if somebody is traveling alone and they are unaware of a tree up ahead, or maybe they know about the tree, but they don't know that it would be a acceptable to say that you're going to be Konish Visa up ahead, even though you haven't gotten there yet. So, So the Gemara wants to know, where are these 2,000 Amis written in the Torah? Now, the assumption has been that Tchum is Midr Abanan. So what does it mean, where is these 2,000 Amis written in the Torah? I, I, I have to assume, I guess, it's an Asmachta. Kilu. You know, is there any, at least like some kind of an allusion to these 2,000 Amis in the Torah? Or maybe you could say, Kilu, where did these 2,000 Amis come from? Maybe that's a better way of saying it. I don't know. Like, did they just pull a number out of a hat and it happened to be 2,000? Like, you know, okay, so even if you want to say that there is a concept of Tchum Shabbos, I don't want you to walk too too far. But how did they determine 2,000 Amis? So, the Tanya, as we learned in the Bryce of Shvu Ishtachtov, Elu Arba Amis. Okay, so as we learned, where do we learn it? Chavu, who could tell me what Daf we learned it on? Who could tell me? Daf Mem Ches. I met uh, three days ago. So, on Daf Mem Ches, we learned that um, the Dalit Amis, so I had thought at the time that it was talking about the four Amis that you're allowed to carry on Shabbos. That's not necessarily incorrect, but it, but it's, Apparently, um, it's also talking about, um, the four Amis that you can, you know, if you're stuck outside of your Tchum, so you have Dalit Amis. Apparently, it's talking about both. I actually looked it up today, because I was curious. Um, apparently, it's both. And, um, anyways, so over here, we're saying, so, so the four Amis that, I guess, both talking about carrying outside of, uh, carrying four Amis from Shisram, but also, um, you know, when you're stuck in the middle of nowhere, you're allowed to walk Dalit Amis. So, meaning even if it's outside of the Tchum. So that is from Shvu Ishtachtov, right? That we learn Kitachtov, that you have a person is three Amis and then plus another Amma, you know, for like his hand, it was a Machlokas. So Elu Arba Amis, Al Yetze Ishmi Mekomo, Elu Alpayim Amma. 
Now, when the Pasuk then continues and says that a person should not leave his place, that is a reference to 2,000 Amas of Tchum Shabbos. Minalan, what does Al Yetze Ishmi Mekomo have to do with 2,000 Amas? We learned the other day about Shavu Ish Tachtav means 4 Amas because it's Kit Tachtav, right? And, and we say that from Kit Tachtav we learn out 3 Amas plus, you know, either another Amas for your, to extend your hands or to pick up something from under your feet and put it under your head. Seder. What does Al Yetze Ishmi Mekomo have to do with 2,000 Amas? Who can tell me? So listen to this, Chaver. Amr of Chizda says of Chizda, Lamadnu makum mi makum mi makum mi nisa, venisa, minisa, venisa, mikvul, gvul, mikvul, gvul, mikhuts, vichuts, mikhuts. You guys got that? Let's read it again. It says of Chizda that we learn mak. I mean, there isn't really a good way to explain this, but basically, it's a whole chain of connections that we have. The, the Gemara doesn't even explain what they are. But basically, we have one pasuk where it says makom. Well, I guess that that's aliyetze ishmi mikomo. So it says makom. Then there's another pasuk that says makom. Now, in that pasuk, same pasuk, it says the word nisa, right? And then there's another pasuk that says nisa. So already from the fact that you have like one pasuk that says nisa and another pasuk that says nisa, and that other pasuk that says nisa also says makom, and then it also says makom by aliyetze uh, ishmi mikomo. Okay, well now we're just getting started though. So venisa venisa. So then we learn out from some other pasuk that says nisa, but then there's some pasuk. That in addition to having the word Nisa, it also says Gvul. So then you learn out Nisa from Gvul. You can make the connection there from Nisa to Gvul. So now we find another puzzle where it says Gvul. Okay. Ugvul mi Gvul. So we learn out from some other puzzle it says Gvul. Okay. Ugvul mi Chutz. And then that puzzle also has Gvul as well as Chutz. And then you can learn out Chutz from another puzzle that says Chutz. Tichsev is a puzzle says, Umados mi Chutz la'ir as paskeid ma'apayim ba'ama v'gomer. Zeo. That's the limud. So, I guess the best way would probably be to work backwards, which is that by the Ariel Levim, right, the, 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 the cities of the Levim, so there were these 2,000 Amis, uh, surrounding the city of like gardens and stuff like that, of like fields. So, so, um, the, um, the Levim, so in the, by the cities of the Levim, it talks about this 2,000 Amma area outside of the city. And there it says Chutz. And then you can kind of work it back that there's some other Pusik that also says, Chutz, and then in that puzzle it says Gvul, and then in the, then they make a connection to another puzzle that says Gvul, but also says Nisa, and then from there they make a connection back to another puzzle that says Nisa, that also says Makom, and then from that puzzle you learn it back to Ayetzi uh, Ishmi um in the context of Shabbos. Uh, okay? <laughs> Basically, <laughs> it creates a whole bunch of ways to like, um, you know, somehow learn, make it, make some kind of a connection between um, Shabbos and the 2000 Amis of the, um, cities of the Levim. Again, again, I mean, I don't think they were talking about a, uh, halacha midorais over here. I think they were saying that the Chachamim, I guess, probably wanted to say that you can't walk too far on Shabbos. And how do they come up with the number? And I guess that somehow you can, you know, like it, it doesn't have to be like super clear. Like it's just, you know, I get, you know, as long as there's some way that you can kind of say that it makes sense, I guess that's enough. All right. As kind of out there as it says. Next, new so 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 the Gemara asks, "Venelaf mikir ha'ir v'chutza elef ama." But then the Gemara asks, "Why don't you know?" In that same pasuk where it talks about the two thousand amas, it also talks about the first one thousand of those two thousand amas. So the question is, how did we decide? How did the Chacham decide that they prefer to determine that Tchum Shabbos is two thousand amas? Why not say like when it says mikir ir v'chutza elef ama? Maybe decide that it's one thousand ama. Right in that in that pasuk it says two thousand amas and it says one thousand amas. So how did they choose two thousand amas and not one thousand amas? So the Gemara answer is done in chutz mi chutz and done in chutz mi chutza. Because if we look at the pasuk, so by two thousand amas it says mi chutz la ir, and by the one thousand amas it says chutza. And if we look at um and if we look at the pasuk that we're learning it out from, so it also says um chutz. So you'd rather compare chutz to chutz rather than chutz to chutza. All right. But then the Gemara says, Umay nafka mina. He says, who cares if it's chutz or chutza? After all, hatana dever bishmal, we have a b'ayis of the mismanage of bishmal, v'shava koin uva koin. We have in the Pazik of Tsaras, by talking about Tsaras, it says that the um, coin will return and the coin will come. Zoe shiva, zoe bia. And we say that they both mean the same thing. That they both functionally mean the same thing, that the coin is going to come back. To inspect the tzaras. So, hane mile, so, nu, so, 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 over there we see it's mamash a different word, right? Vishava, uva coin, where is it? Uva a coin, vishava coin, uva coin, right? Mamash, one puzzle says vishav, the other puzzle says uva. 
Mom is two different words, and yet we're learning out one from the other. So what's the big deal between chutz and chutza? So the Gemara answers, Yeah, that's because when it comes to Vishav and Uva, there's nothing else that's similar to it. Right? They both lemaisa mean that the coin is going to come back. Therefore, you can learn out one from the other, even though they're actually completely different words, but there's nothing that's closer to it. There's no closer match. Whereas over here, we mamish have an exact match, chutz and chutz. Therefore, we'd rather learn out the exact match rather than the close enough match. All right. Okay, Alpaim Ama Agulis. So the Mishnah, the, the, there was a machlok in the Mishnah between Chanina ben Antigonus and the uh, Chachamim about do these, are, are these 2,000 Amis, are they, um, um, uh, like a circle, kilu two thousand am- like two thousand amas as it, like as if like you're in the middle of a circle and you can go two thousand amas in any direction. That you're in a circle that has a diameter of four thousand amas. Or the chachamim said that it's actually a square. That 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 it's like a square that has four thousand amas on, on on each side. And then you can theoretically walk from one corner to the other, and it's going to be the uh, high, you know the the uh, diagonal of the square, which is going to be larger than four thousand amas. Um. So now, Rebchanina ben Antigon is manav shachs. Now, Gemara wants to try to understand how does Rebchanina ben Antigon come up with this idea of a um, circle that has a four thousand ama diameter? He is like gzeir shava peus ksivan. Well, if he holds of the gzeir shava to learn out uh, two thousand amas from the cities of the Levim, from the two thousand ama area outside the cities of the Levim, well, in that pasuk it says michutz leir es peas. Kedma alpaim ba'ama. The corners, right? That in those cities, there, right? It was a square. That there were that there was two thousand. It was a four thousand ama square, I guess. Right? It says pas, which means corners. So therefore, if we're going to learn out from the levim, so then we would say that we're talking about by tchum shabbos, a an area that that is square that has corners. So if Reb Chanina ben Antigonus is learning out, um, the two thousand amas from that pasuk by the Levim, well, then it should be a square. And if he doesn't hold of the Gzair Shava, well then, where does he come up with 2,000 Amas? So the Gemara answer is, Lo'olam is the Gzair Shava. Really, Rabbi Hanina ben Antigonus does hold of the Gzair Shava, and that is how he learns out 2,000 Amas from the um, Levim. V'shayni Acha, but it's different over here by um, what are we talking about again? Tchum. The Amakra Zeye Loem Migrushe Ha'arim. That this will be for them the areas outside of their cities. So Laze Atanosin Peos, Viatanosin Peos, the Shov Shabbos. That specifically Laze for this, for the Ari Levim, that is where there are corners. But on Shabbos, there's no corners. It's going to be a circle. It's going to be 2,000 Amos in any direction. And that, and that basically creates a circle. Rabbanon, however, the Rabbanon say, Tani Rav Hananya Omer, that there's a brisa in which a Rav Hananya says, I wonder why it's Rav and not Rebbe, Kazeyu Koshov Se Shabbos, that no, what does it mean, um, uh, ze? It means that like this will also be all the Shov Se Shabbos, that on Shabbos as well, there will be corners, it will be a square and not a circle. Amravachabar Yaakov, Somebody who carries four Amas in Rishus Arabim. That this is extremely interesting. That in order to be Chayav for carrying something Dalad Amas in Rishus Arabim, it's not just Dalad Amas, it's actually more than that. Imagine a, uh, a uh, square that's four Amas by four Amas. The diagonal of the square, i.e. like the hypotenuse of the right triangle, it's going to be four and three-fifths Amas. Apparently, I guess if you do Pythagorean's theorem, that's what it comes out to. So, so uh, very interesting, right? So when we talk about carrying Dalad Amos or Shisarabim, it's actually a little bit more than Dalad Amos. Very interesting, because it comes. It's based on this uh, this pasuk that talks about um, the uh, right, right, right. That we're talking about these uh, measurements from the Levim. That it says that on by by, by the Levim that we compare it to Shabbos. It says um, corners. So even somebody who carries Dalad Amos or Shusarabim, it's talking about the diagonal of the square. Interesting. Amr of Papa, Badiklan Rava. Interesting. So Rav Papa says that Rava was testing us. And he asked, Amr Bushusarabim Gavo Ayud Virochav Dalad. 
What if you have a uh, beam that's in Rosh Hashanah, a pillar that's in Rosh Hashanah, and it's 10 Tfachim tall, Viroch of Dalad, and it has a width of 4. Oh my gosh, it's so funny how like this stuff came into our lives, man. Like this whole height of 10 Tfachim and width of 4 Tfachim. I mean, by now this is like standard stuff for us. Like, uh, it's crazy how this has like become like normal, like, I don't know, this is like, complicated stuff. Imagine... Imagine like five months ago thinking about all this, you know, 10 tefachim tall, 4 tefachim by 4 tefachim wide. It would be like, what are we talking about? Now this is just like, you know, ma'asim shibu yom, like daily kind of stuff. You know, soon we're going to get, we're going to move on. This is going to end, right? <laughs> Shabbos and Erev and all this uh, stuff of Tchum and, and Rishuyos and Rishus Ayachid and all that kind of stuff. We will get past this and then we're going to think back to it and be like, wow, those were crazy times. But anyways... Um so if you have a pillar that's a Rishus Arabim, it's ten Tfachim tall and it's has a width of four Tfachim, Tsarchain Valachsonan Olo. Does it have to be a square or not? So meaning basically what happens if you have a circle that the diameter is four Amos? No, four Tfachim. So so um meaning so so when we're talking about areas, so let's say if it was square, for example, so it would be four Tfachim by four Tfachim. A square, four tefachim by four tefachim, but its diagonal would be larger than that. So, so, um, so do we need that for this pillar? Does the pillar have to be square? What if it's circle? So, and we said to him, Is this not what Rav Chananya taught? Tanya, Rav Chananya Omer, Kazei Yuhu, Kol Shov Shabbos, that like this will be all the Shov Sei Shabbos, that, that just like by the cities of the Levim, there were corners, it was square. So also over here, by Shabbos, we're going to be talking about squares. And therefore, this pillar in Rosh Hashanah would have to be square, right? Four Tfachim by four Tfachim with a um, diameter, that not a diameter, a, a diagonal, which is going to be, you know, I guess, four and three-fifths or whatever. And, and the interesting, th- and I think, so, and therefore, if it, was a, if it was a circle with a diameter of four Tfachim, that wouldn't be big enough. But I do think, like, we're not, like, we're not in Mesech to Shabbos and Davches, that, you know, if you would have a circle whose diameter was four and three fifths, I think that that would be sufficient. Fine. Okay, and now we're going to get on to this, uh, machlokas between Reb Meir and Reb Yehuda about how to exactly understand what is like the core implementation of a, um, a Ruve Tchumen. Okay, so, so let's see. So, Vizehu Sha'amru, Ani Me'ariv Biraglov, this is what they said that, uh, so the Mishnah said that, that when we're talking about this person who's stuck in the middle of nowhere and he's got no food and he needs to make an Erev, so, and this is the case where we say that in Ani, a poor person can make an Erev just by be- Biragla, with his feet, i.e. just by being in a certain location. But, um, Right, Amr Reb Meir says, Reb Meir, Anu ein lanu ela ani v'chule. Right, only a poor person can do this, but a rich person, and in, in the context of the Gemara coming up, a poor person doesn't literally mean, um, you know, the way that we normally think of a poor person. It means somebody who's in the middle of nowhere. Uh, he might have a lot of money in his bank account, but right now he's stuck in the middle of nowhere and he doesn't have food with him. So he's an ani. Uh, a rich person would be somebody even who doesn't have much money, but he's got enough food for the next two meals at least, you know. So, so that would be a rich person. I mean, somebody who has access to food. Okay. So a poor person, he can just kind of make an Erev by going to the location without any bread. But somebody who has bread, says Reb Meir, would have to use the bread. Okay. Amr of Nachman says of Nachman, Machlokas bin Komi. Okay. So it says of Nachman that the Machlokas between now remember, in the Mishnah we talked about two different situations. This is, this is going to be really important. It's a little subtle, the next part, but I, I don't think it has to be, right? So basically, we just got to, there's like different situations. We got to keep on, keep our heads on like which situation we're talking about. So in the Mishnah, we talked about two different situations. One is when the guy doesn't know that he's allowed to say that he's going to make his Erev up ahead or that he doesn't know of some location up ahead. So he just says, look, I'm going to make Shabbos where I am right now. I'm going to be Konish Visa where I am right now. And then he gets 2,000 Amis um, from where he is in any direction. Um, the other case was the bigger Chiddush, which is that he's actually being Konish Visa in some place where he never was, some place where he didn't leave any food in advance, some place where he isn't going to be there when Shabbos begins, 
Right, Rabba says maybe he has to be able to get there if he runs fast, but he doesn't actually have to run fast. I think I said Rabba, but I meant Rabba. Um, so, so that's a bigger chiddush, right? That he says that, right? That he's just gonna have in mind that it's gonna be like I'm gonna be in that place up ahead when Shabbos begins, and that would be enough as well. Um, in this case, at least when he's in the middle of nowhere. So the Amr of Nachman Machlokas bin Komi. So the Machlokas between Reb Meir and Reb Yehuda in our Mishnah is only bim komi, is only in the case where he says that I'm going to be Konish Visa right here where I am right now. And we say that he's Konish Visa there and that he gets 2,000 Amas in any direction. Rabbi Meir says that that only works because he's right now in the middle of nowhere and he's an Ani right now. He doesn't have any food with him. He's stuck in the middle of nowhere. So Rabbi Meir says it works. However, in a situation where a person's at his home and he's thinking, you know, um, um, uh, you know, maybe I'll just walk out to that place and wait there when Shabbos starts and I won't bring any food with me. No, Reb Meir says that wouldn't work. You know, you, the main thing is the food. You have to bring the food there, right? So, Amr of Nach, Machlok has been Komi. So, Reb Nachman says that the Machlok between Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yehuda is Davka in, uh, when, when, when he's going to be Konish Fis in the place where he physically is right now. To Reb Meir's suffer, Ika Erev Bapas. The Reb Meir says that the main, um, um, implementation of an eruve tumen is the bread, okay? And therefore, anihu da kilu rabbanon ilave. Therefore, if you have a poor person, a person who's traveling, he's in the middle of nowhere, he doesn't have any food with him. So that is when we say that, that, that he's allowed to say, look, I'm here right now, I'm gonna be konish visa here, even without any bread. Rab, um, aval, ashilo. But says Rabbi Meir, if he had food with him, he would have to be make, he would have to make the Arab with food. Rabbi Yehuda Savar, Rabbi Yehuda disagrees with Rabbi Meir. And he holds Iker Erev Birego, that the main implementation of an Erev Etchumen is actually going there and being there physically. Echad Ani Ve'echad Asher. And that's whether you are a person who's stuck in the middle of nowhere without any food, or whether you have food, but you'd rather not put it out in the middle of nowhere, you'd rather keep it in your refrigerator, and you'd rather just walk there and stay there when Shabbos starts. That would be perfectly acceptable according to Rabbi Yehuda. However, in the case which is the bigger Chiddush, which is to say that I'm going to be Konish Visa when Shabbos starts up ahead at some tree where I didn't leave any food in advance and I, I, I'm not going to be there when Shabbos begins yet. Everyone agrees, both Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yehuda agree, that this is a chiddish and this is acceptable only to a poor person. It's acceptable only to somebody who's traveling and doesn't have any food with them and he's, you know, or he's just basically stuck in the middle of nowhere. That is why it, that is why it, that case works. Vizoi Sha'amu Mankatanila, who's the one who taught that, um, this is what they say, that only a poor person is allowed to be Ma'ar Biraglav? Well, that's obviously Rabbi Meir. That's Rabbi Meir Vahaya Kai. And what's he talking about? I ain't no makir. And it's talking about somebody who um, doesn't have, he doesn't know of some tree up ahead, and he is um, not, um, or, and he doesn't know about halacha, and therefore he says that, he, um, you know, I'm just going to make my Arab where I am right now. So in that case, no, where am I? I'm not, I'm not, Okay, and Reb Meir says that in that case, because uh, he's stuck in the middle of nowhere, he doesn't have any food, that is why he is allowed to be Kone Shvisa um, without any bread. And then when the Mishnah says, when the Mishnah then says that the whole idea of making an Arab with bread is really just to, to, as a convenience method for rich people, for people who can afford it, well then... You know, but anybody could be Ma'ar Berego. Well, that's, of course, going to be Mankatanila, Rabbi Yehuda. That is going to be Rabbi Yehuda's opinion, who says that, no, the Iker Erev is Beregel, is going there and being there physically, but as a convenience method, you can, you know, send somebody with some food in advance, and that would be fine as well. Okay, fine. Now, Rav Chizda Omar says of Chizda, Machlok is Bimakom Ploni. Interesting. Rav Chizda says that actually, where the machlok is between Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yehuda is, is when he says that he intends to be Konashvisa up ahead under the tree. 
in this place where he's never been before. He doesn't have any food there and he, he's not going to physically be there when Shabbos begins. So interestingly, so Reb Meir says that that's only acceptable because he's in the middle of nowhere right now. That's why it works. But Rabbi Yehuda would disagree with Reb Meir and say that actually, even wealthy people could do that. Even people who are sitting at home with tons of food and whatever they want and they, they could theoretically walk out to where they want to make their Erev, they could literally just have in mind, I want to be Konish Visa, smack in the middle of the city I'm in right now and the next city over. That's it. It'll be Konish Visa in that area. Just like Rebuta says that, just like over here, when you're, you know, walking and you're stuck in the middle of nowhere, you could say, I'm going to be Konish Visa up ahead. You can mamish do the same thing when you're sitting at home on, air, on Friday afternoon and you're just lazy and you don't feel like walking out to the middle of the two cities to be Konish Visa. You could just say, look, I have a mind to be Konish Visa up ahead, uh, halfway between this city and the next one. The Rabbi Meir says that um, you know only an, only a poor person, only a person stuck in the middle of nowhere can make his uh, eruv up ahead. Rabbi Yehuda says Rabbi Echad Ani Echad Asher. Even a even a rich person, even a person who's at home and he's got everything he needs, um, can simply just have in mind to be Konish Visa in a certain place, and that would work. But in terms of like you know, making uh, uh, an air of where I am right now. Everyone agrees that whether you have food in your fridge, whether you don't have food, in, you know, whether, whether you're wealthy, whether you're rich, whether you have food in your fridge, whether you're stuck in the middle of nowhere, it makes no difference. Anybody can just go to a location and be Konish Fis in that location by being there even without bread. Because both Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yehuda agree that the main thing of an Erev is being there physically. And this is what the um, Mishnah says, Mankatanila, right? Meaning when it says that this is what we mean that Davka and Ani can, um, can, can make this kind of an Arab. So it's Reb Meir, that is Reb Meir's opinion. It's talking about on this, um, it's talking about somebody who's going to make an Arab up ahead, right? Only in that case, uh, uh, meaning only an Ani would be able to do that, and that is Reb Meir's opinion. And then when the Mishnah had said that this idea of making a, right, of, 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 uh, of, of being able to make a Arab with bread just as a convenience method for wealthy people, Mankatani la call, everyone agrees with that, right? Because according to this reading, even, right, even Reb Meir agrees that Ikra Arab is Beregel, and the whole concept of, uh, using bread is just as a convenience method for people who can afford to send out some food with somebody before Shabbos. So, the main thing is that, um, according to Rav Nachman, the machlokas between Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yehuda is about how do we understand sort of the core um, implementation of an Erev. Rabbi Meir says that Iker Erev bipas, the main way to make an Erev Tumen is by putting bread in a place. And you can't just decide, I'm going to go there and just wait there until Shabbos starts if you have bread in your refrigerator. That's reserved for when... Um, you're stuck in the middle of nowhere. Rabbi Yehuda disagrees, and he says that Iker Eruv is Beregel. The main implementation of an Eruv is to just go there and wait there and be Konish Visa there when Shabbos begins. However, as a convenience method, you can send out some bread with, with like a, you know, a, with, with a Shliach to, to be Konish Visa for you, and you can stay at home. Um, that is the way Rav Nachman understands it. According to Rav Chizda, however, everybody agrees, even Rabbi Meir agrees, Iker uh, Eruv is Beregel. The main implementation of the, of the Eruv is just to go somewhere and be there when Shabbos begins. Um, and it's a convenience method, right? The, the bread is just a convenience method for people who can afford it. Um, where they argue, according to Frizda, is can I, um, just decide that I'm gonna be Konish Visa up ahead in some other location? Rabbi Meir says that is reserved for people stuck in the middle of nowhere. Rabbi Yehuda says anybody could do it, even if you're, even if you're at home and you decide you don't feel like organizing an Eruv. Just have in mind, I'm gonna make my Erev up ahead somewhere, somewhere, you know, past my city boundaries. Tanik of Asit Rav Nachman. The Gemara says that we have a Brisa supporting Rav Nachman to say that the Machlokas between Rav Meir and Rav Yehuda and Rav Yehuda is about whether it's Iker, um, Erev be Regel, like Rav Yehuda, or Iker Erev be Pas, like Rav Meir. So here's what the Bryce says. Echad ani ve'echad ashir. So whether you have a person who is poor, or whether you have a person who is rich, ma'arvin bepas, you can make an eruv with um, bread. Right? Bread is always going to work. 
Velo yetze asher chutz letchum. However, a person who's rich, a person who has food in, in, in his house, he shouldn't go. Doesn't literally mean outside the chum. Means like outside of his city, maybe to the end of the chum. Rashi says, if you want to say it means literally outside of the chum, but then it's going to be within the four amos that you can still walk outside of the chum. But basically, the, the idea is a, a person who has food shouldn't just go and walk outside of his city to make an eruv somewhere bimkomi and say that this is where I'm going to be konish visa without using any food. Because the whole idea of making an eruv by just going to the location without any food is really reserved for somebody who is in the middle of nowhere and doesn't have any food. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, so ayi, ikr eruv bipas. Rabbi Yehuda Omer says, Rabbi Yehuda, echad ani ve'echad ashir, whether the person is poor, whether the person is wealthy, i.e. whether he has food in his house, whether he doesn't have food in his house, whether he's stuck in the middle of nowhere, ma'arvin biregel, you can always make an eruv by walking to a place. Ve'yetze ashir, chutz litchum. And a person uh, who has food in his house can just walk outside of a city to some uh, place and make v'yomar and say, Teishvisasi b'mkomi, I'm going to be konishvisa for Shabbos over here. V'zehu ikaro shel Erev. And this is really the main implementation of an Erev Tchumen. V'yitiru chachamim l'vala bayis l'shalech Eruvo b'yad avdo. But the chachamim were, uh, took it easy on the Baal bayis. And they said, you don't actually have to go and walk out to where you're going to be Kona Shvisa yourself. Rather, what you can do is you could send some bread, some food with your servant, Biad Bino, with your son, Biad Shlucho, with a messenger, Bishvil Lahakil Olav, just so that as a convenience method for people who can afford it and have food that they could send out with somebody to take for them. So we see from there that the machlokas between Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yehuda is, do we say that Iker Eruv Bipas, like Rabbi Meir, or Iker Eruv Be Regel, like Rabbi Yehuda, and that is basically like the way that Rav Nachman understands it, because according to Rav Chizda, everyone agrees that Iker Eir of Beregel. Amr Rabbi Yehuda says, Rabbi Yehuda, my seban shebez mamel, that, so Rabbi Yehuda brings a support for himself to say that even people who have food can be ma'ari Beregel, that there was a story with the people of Beis Mamel, Uvan Beis Gurion, and the people who lived in Beis Gurion, Ba'aroma, that there was, um, there was a story with them in Aroma, a place called Aroma. Show you Mechalkin Grogus Vitsimukin La Anim Bishne Batsores. That these people of Anshe Mamo and Anshe Beis Gorion, so during times of uh, famine, when there was no food, so they would go and they would, or I guess not enough food, um, so then they would go and they would um, distribute, they would go to a place called Aroma and distribute food for poor people. Uvayin Anie Kfar Shichin, Vanie Kfar Hananya, and the poor people of Kfar Shichin and of Kfar Hananya would come on Friday afternoons, on Friday evenings, and they would sleep there for, or at least they would be there when um, Shabbos would come in. Meaning, they would be Ma'ar Beregel. They wouldn't be Ma'ar Bipas. Even though they had, at least, you know, even if they were poor people, and even though it sounds like they didn't have much food, but apparently they had at least Muslim Shtei Sudos, at least enough that they could have made an Eruv. And then the next day, they would go and, um, and uh, get their food from um, from uh, aroma. So what do we see? So we see that even though, you know, they weren't they weren't travelers. They weren't people, you know, stuck in the middle of nowhere. They were people who were coming from their homes. I mean, some of them at least had Muslim based Sudas. So therefore they could have been Ma'ariv Bid Pas, and yet we see that they were being Ma'ariv Biregel. So Rabbi Yehuda is bringing that as a proof that um even a uh, Ashirim can be Ma'ariv Biregel. So this brisa is a proof for Rav Nachman who says that the machlokas between Rav Meir and Rav Yudah is about um, um, you know Iker Eruv Bipas like Rav Meir or Iker Eruv Piregel like Rav Yehuda. Amr Rav Ashi says Rav Ashi Masnisa Nami Deka. Also the Mishnah that we're going to learn tomorrow we can imply that um, that uh, it's like Rav, da- Rav Nachman and not like Rav Chizda. The Dikatani as the Mishnah says Mishiyotza Lelech Leir Shema Arvin La. So if you have a fellow and he leaves his house and he's going to walk over to the next city, Shema Arvinla, Kilu, that is within 4,000 Amas of his city that you can theoretically make an Erev in between. And that was his intention, that he was going to go in and um, be Konish Visa smack in the middle of the two cities. Berzero Chavero, but his friend sent him back. As Rashi says, either because it was he, his friend warned him, warned him it's like boiling hot out there or it's too cold, whatever it is. So he sent him back. So you have this guy, 
he was planning to leave his city, go to the next city, well, or at least be Konish Visa somewhere in the middle. Let's see. So Mutu Lelech, so he is allowed the next day to go or go to the next city. Um Ir Asurin. But nobody else in his city would be allowed to. Only he would be allowed to walk to the next city. So kind of we see that some, somehow something here worked in terms of Arab. We gotta figure out what this means. Divya Buddha, that's what Buddha's question. That, 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 that's what Buddha's opinion. Bavinambam, we ask, Maishna Iu, Maishna Inu. What's the difference between him and everybody else? How come he's allowed to walk to the next city, but nobody else is? After all, he left his city and immediately he was turned back by his friend. So what happened there that allowed him, that allows him the next day to be able to walk to the next city? Here what are we talking about? So we're talking about a fellow who owned a house in both cities. He owned a house in the city that he was coming from and he owned a house in the other city. So one second. So this guy's got a house in the city that he was coming from and he's got a house in the city that he was going to. Now, he actually wasn't intending to be Konish Visa in the middle. He was actually planning to go over to that other place for Shabbos. Therefore, he wasn't planning to make a... um uh, like an Arab in the middle, it wasn't planning on like, you know, being Konish Visa anywhere. Rather, he was Pashit traveling. And came in the Nafkale the Orcha, once he went out on the way. So, Havale Oni. So, basically, he's a person who's stuck in the middle without any food. And therefore, as we know, somebody who's stuck in the middle of nowhere with no food, he's allowed to just intention, you know, have in mind, I'm going to be Konish Visa up ahead. And that's exactly what happened with this guy. That you had this guy, he was planning on Mamish going to the next city for Shabbos. He got turned around in the middle, but at the time, once he left, he was just a regular traveler, going from one place to another. And then when his friend told him, hey, turn around, you know, it's too hot or whatever. So then, at that point, he's allowed to simply have in mind to be Konish Visa up ahead, and that'll work, and that's in fact where he was Konish Visa, and that, therefore the next day he's allowed to walk from the city, from his city, to the next city. Because he was Konish Visa with his intention, that he was going to be Konish up ahead. And therefore, because he was traveling in the middle of nowhere, he's our Ani, he's our person. He's our poor person who's allowed to be Konish Visa in a different place. Vahana Hashirim Ninu, but everybody else in his city, they were wealthy people, they were, right, they were home. They had food. So Alma, what do we see from here? Kol b'makom ploni ani in asher lo shmamina. So what do we see? So we see that the idea of making uh, an eruv tchumin up ahead in some other place that you that you're not at that is reserved for poor people, not for rich people. Now, even Rabbi Yehuda agrees with that because this is Rabbi Yehuda's opinion. Now, according to Rav Chizda, Rabbi Yehuda would say that even rich people can be konish visa up ahead in some place where they never were at. But from this Mishnah, with that we see that Rabbi Yehuda. Is saying that Davka, it works for him because he's a poor person, because he's out in the middle of nowhere. Well, clearly we see that, uh, that it's like Rav Nachman who says that everyone agrees that to make a, an Erev up ahead, that would only work for a poor person. Oh, so Rav Barashi was teaching Chia Barav in front of Rav. Echad Oni ve'echad Ashir. That whether you are a wealthy person, whether you are a poor person, you would be able to be ma'ayr biraglav, meaning, meaning not, not up ahead, but in the place where you are now, you know, you, you can just be konish visa where you are now, even if you, you know, had food that you could have brought with you. Amrle Rav, and Rav said to Rav Chibarashi, Sayyim ba nami alacha krab yuda, say that this is the alacha, like Rabbi Yehuda, um, that, um, basically the bread is just a convenience method, and it's like Rabbi Yehuda's opinion, according to, and um, Rav Nachman. Rabbi Bar Chanan have a artivna lefum bedisa. So Rabbi Bar Chanan would often travel on Shabbos from Artivna to Pumpedisa. Now there was four thousand Amis from Artivna to Pumpedisa. The Amar and he would be sitting in his house before Shabbos and he would say, "Teish visasi b'tzinsa." I have in mind that I'm going to be konish visa up ahead, smack in the middle of these four thousand Amis in a place called Sinsa. So basically what he was doing is like Rabbi Huda's opinion according to Rav Chizda, right? That even wealthy people, even people sitting at home can simply have in mind to be Konish Visa somewhere else. It's not reserved for people 
stuck in the middle of nowhere. Amalei Abai, Abai says to Abba Bar of Khanan, my daitech, what makes you think that you can do that? What makes you think that you can sit in the comfort of your home and just have in mind to be Konish Visa halfway between um, Artivna and Pumbedisa? Is it because Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Yehuda, Allah, Rabbi Yehuda? Is it because we know that a machlok between Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yehuda, we're going to pass on Rabbi Yehuda as we've learned recently? The Amr of Chizda, and Rabbi Chizda said, Machlok is Bumakomploni, that the machlokas is, uh, that right, the machlok between Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yehuda is when he says that he's going to be Konish Visa in the middle of nowhere, right, 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 right up ahead, that Rabbi Yehuda says that you can even, even an usher can do that. And therefore you're passing like Rabbi Yehuda according to Rabbi Chizda. But what about the fact that um, we have a Bryce supporting Rav Nachman's opinion? And according to Rav Nachman, everyone agrees that a, a ritual, oh, right, 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 that making your, being Konish Visa up ahead is reserved only for poor people, not people sitting at home. So Rabbi Rav Khanan says, wow, okay, I've, I've changed my mind. I, I, I will not do that anymore. Uh, so, okay, that was the afternoon of uh, Masech the Erevin. Kind of like interesting stuff, right? I think. Anyway, so at the beginning we talked about, you know, Rabbah said that uh, in order to be Konish Visa up ahead, you have to at least be able to get there beforehand. Okay, fine. The main sugya though of today's daf was really this machlokas between Rabbi Yehuda and, and Rabbi Meir about um, how to understand sort of the mechanism of uh, the parameters um, of, of uh, Erev. So according to Rabbi Nachman, he says, look, in terms of making an Erev um, where you are right now, so the mayor says that you really have to use bread. Only poor people stuck in the middle of nowhere can be Kona Shvisa Baraglav because Iker uh, Eruv is Bipas. Whereas Abuda says Iker Eruv is Beregel and anybody can, you know, even a rich person can be Kona Shvisa where they are without any food. Uh, but in terms of making the Eruv up ahead in some other place, um, everyone agrees. Both her mayor and Rabuda agree that that's reserved for people stuck in the middle of nowhere. According to Avchizda, he says that um, actually the Machlokas between Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yudah is when you're stuck in the middle of nowhere, right? That um, even Rabbi Yudah would say, um, no, what? No, I'm sorry. That right, right? That um, the machlokas is, is is by making an Arab up ahead, right? That uh, Rabbi Meir said that that's reserved for poor people, people stuck in the middle of nowhere. And Rabbi Yudah says even wealthy people, even people at home, can simply have in mind to um, to, to make an Arab in some other place. Um, but when it comes to making an Arab where you are right now, being Kone being Konish Visa Biraglav, making Erev without any food with you. So um, everyone would agree that that works. Even a mayor would say that Iker Erev be Regel. So that is the Machlokas between uh, Rav Nachman and Rav Chizda. And we brought a Brisa and other proofs to support Rav Nachman. So it sounds like that's the way to go. Chaver, peace out. Bye.